Hello everyone. I am Kakarla Krishna Kishore. Today we are going to discuss corrosion and thermal fatigue in material technology. Let us discuss what are the various features in corrosion and thermal fatigue. <music> Let me discuss the various salient features of corrosion and thermal fatigue. The first one is corrosion fatigue. What is corrosion fatigue? Here, the corrosion fatigue means it is a fatigue in a corrosive environment. Means environment plays a vital role in making the corrosion of any material. So here, the word fatigue is added to the corrosion then what is corrosion fatigue here so the fatigue means if you apply a load on a material at frequent intervals of time because of that load if the material undergone any crack that can be observed as a fatigue then corrosion fatigue here the corrosion is added to the fatigue let us discuss the corrosion fatigue in detail here the mean point of corrosion fatigue is it is the mechanical degradation of material under the joint action of corrosion and cyclic loading so that means both corrosion is happened on the material due to the cyclic loading and another point is almost all engineering structures if you take any structure that is engineering structures in this world they experience some form of alternating stress and are exposed to harmful environments during their service life. So that's why the study of corrosion fatigue is very, very important. Let us see some image here. See the two images. There exists a difference between these two images. Observe the first image now. In this first image, an oxide layer is protected the metal here you can observe the load is on the metal continuous load cyclic load is observed on the metal and due to that a crack is happened here so that is called as a cracks in the oxide layer after some time because of this load if this crack you can observe the second image here if this crack is opened, so that means automatically whatever the protective oxide layer, if this is damaged, then corrosive environment enters the crack after oxide damage. So that's why this protective oxide layer is very, very important. We have to take care of protective oxide layer to avoid corrosive damage. Whenever this crack enters that is a corrosive environment enters through this crack after the oxide damage automatically the entire surface of the metal will undergone the corrosive environment so that's why to understand corrosive fatigue and to analyze corrosive fatigue lot of analysis is required and now in this session we are going to discuss all this analysis now let us discuss some more points the how the environment plays a vital role here the whatever the environment we are saying that that environment plays a significant role in the fatigue of high strength structural materials like steel aluminum alloys and titanium alloys whatever the materials that you have taken here so all they have high specific strength or being developed to meet the requirements of advancing technology so here if these materials are having a lot of impact in the society we have to take care of all these materials then you must avoid corrosive fatigue on these materials first of all to avoid corrosive fatigue we must understand what is corrosive fatigue and how it is happened let us discuss how this corrosive fatigue forms on the surface. Observe the image carefully here. Assume this is a surface, 
many times corrosion occurs just one type of metal present but the corrosion cell model is still applicable so let us take this as a specimen for us to understand the corrosion fitting now if you observe the second image here we can observe the same surface as a material that is any matter we have microscopic impurities here sometimes we cannot see the microscopic images on its surface especially due to its refinement and production then these impurities whatever the impurities existed here these impurities because of slight potential differences so that means uh, if you say this is having some potential and this is having another potential may have a slight difference so that's why this is called as an anode and this is called as a cathode and almost all materials are having this type of uh, structural that is a potential differences and these whatever the anode and cathode these are called as a local action cells and these are known as anode and cathode and here if you observe the left side of the material assume that anodes are present the main point that is the anode is the part of the metal that corrodes so that means this plays a vital role in absorbing the corrodes here and what happens exactly please observe the picture here here from the material that is from the surface iron fe plus plus iron is lost to the water that is water is the environment here the medium iron is lost to the water and becomes oxidized fe plus plus when fe is lost to the water it becomes fe plus plus then as a result when fe plus plus lost to the water automatically two electrons here you can observe two electrons are realized to flow through the steel to the cathodic area so that means from anode area to cathode area two electrons will flow then what happens here if you observe here it is clearly says that they are taken up by oxygen takes the electron here whatever the electrons released by the anode it will be taken up by the depolarizer which is represented as a oxygen so if oxygen takes the electrons then it forms hydroxyl ions which is represented as oh and if you observe the next image this is the image here that is fe plus plus this is already in the water that is in the moisture and oh is already formed because of the oxygen taking the electron so these two that means fe plus plus to form the mixture of hydrox hydrous iron oxide that is fe oh like this so that means when these two mix together it forms fe oh like this you can observe here this fe oh which is nothing but rust so that means corrosion so we are usually represent fe oh is as a rust in another words it is a corrosion and if you observe this area this is the anode area the total which is also represented as a corrosion pit and on this surface we can say that it is a corrosion product here and what causes the corrosion fatigue here the main point is corrosion fatigue whatever the fatigue up to now that is whatever the corrosion that you have seen up to now is caused by crack development under the simultaneous action of corrosion and cyclic stress so that means if the corrosion is happened on the surface due to the oxygen or due to the whatever the reason and here simultaneous action of corrosion and cyclic stress automatically the crack may be developed the usual case involves rapidly fluctuating stresses that may be well below the tensile strength so that means whatever the stress is applied here that must be below the tensile strength only and next point is thermal fatigue so what is a thermal fatigue here now up to now we have seen corrosion fatigue now let me discuss the thermal 
fatigue. What is the thermal fatigue here? Here, uh, the name itself is saying that it includes the temperature. The fatigue is due to the temperature effect. If you observe the first point here, thermal fatigue is a specific type of fatigue failure mechanism that is induced by cyclic stresses from repetitive fluctuations in the temperature of equipment. A lot of sentences here. The main point is it is a fatigue failure mechanism. And the second point is cyclic stresses. And the next one is repetitive fluctuations. Fatigue means repetitive at frequent intervals of time. If the load is applied on the material, then the question is what is that load here? The load is thermal load. Thermal load means we are applying temperature to the material. If you apply temperature to the material with the help of some equipment, automatically that material undergone thermal fatigue. Here, the degree of damage mainly affected by the magnitude and frequency of the temperature swings. How much temperature you are giving and at what frequency and what is the magnitude of temperature. The total thermal fatigue depends on all these values. If you observe this picture here, this picture is due to the solder fatigue here, crack formation in solder joints with uniform loads here. You can observe the growth here. The grain growth is happened. Microvoids are happened due to the thermal effect. And microvoids are converted as a macro cracks here like this. You can observe here. Here also you can observe. So this may be the result due to the temperature effect on any material. So it's only a small material effect and a lot of effects will be happened due to the thermal fatigue. Now, how does this uh, temperature affect the fatigue here? The first point is temperature. Whenever the temperature increases, it accelerates debris structural sins. That means uh, deformed, deformed structural change in fatigue contact zone and affect the fatigue behavior. This is the main point here. It affects the fatigue contact zone and affect the fatigue behavior. Suppose if any certain temperature of a number of fatigue cycles, Tayen coating experiences its fatigue debris structural. Debris means a deformation structural change from amorphous. Amorphous means it is like a powder. Powder to the disturbed structure or the debris structure and due to the high friction to nano crystalline debris. So that means uh, Due to this temperature, whatever the coating surface is converted to the nano crystalline debris here. So this is the main effect due to the temperature or the temperature fatigue. Let us take a sample here. This is one support. This is another support. This is the specimen here. This specimen is connected through some wires that is which is giving temperature here on and off temperature because of this temperature and here we are giving the temperature as a load and at the same time we are giving this fluctuations so that means the maximum when it compresses this is the minimum stress that is given by this support due to this if you draw the graph versus a temp that is temperature versus a time please observe the temperature in initial stage temperature increases and temperature decreases and if you increase the temperature and again if you decrease the temperature then what may be happened for the specimen and again for the stresses increase the stress and decrease the stress increase the stress so like this if at frequent intervals of time if you give the fluctuating stresses and the fluctuating temperatures automatically the specimen undergone both corrosion and Fatigue. So this uh, can be a damage for any material. How we can prevent, how uh, the thermal fatigue may be prevented. So that means how to avoid this. See the point here, the best way to prevent failure due to thermal fatigue is to minimize thermal stresses. 
So that means whenever the temperature is observed around the specimen, you must take care of the temperature environment so that thermal stresses may be minimized and the cycling is the design. So that means to avoid the stresses, the it may be a mechanical stress or it may be a stress due to the temperature. So you must avoid and you must take care of the environment of the material and the operating of the equipment. The main point is reducing stress riser and controlling the temperature fluctuations, especially when you start the machine and when you end the machine, the fluctuations will be absorbed by the material and uh, reducing thermal gradient, the temperature magnitude is also plays a vital role in giving the pressure of the material. So all these things, if you take care of all these things, automatically the material can be avoided the thermal fatigue. So this is all about uh, thermal fatigue and corrosion fatigue. I hope you understand this uh, two fatigues. In next coming videos, we will discuss a uh, lot of other topics in material technology. Thank you. Thank you, Varandal. This is Kakala Krishna Kishore signing off.